All right, guys. So in the previous video, we created this news feed with the help of Apollo query tag. We also created this date filter using moment package, as well as we created this scroll to top functionality with the help of pagination and all sort of stuff using watcher. So in this video, I'm going to create this post users post feed. So for example, it will be a kind of dashboard from where the user can control and manage all of his posts. So let's see in the action how we can do that. So first of all, I'm going to make quick change inside my dashboard JS route. I'm going to make this user post and I'm going to rename this file to users post user post and I'm going to save this. Oops, I think yeah save this so everything is saved and formatted properly so now it's working for us let me close everything and now in this video i'm going to create a new post list component so inside my users post i'm going to create a card and let me first create a row dot row within that row i'm going to create a call of 12 so on all size of screens it will be column 12 then within that i'm going to give a card and then i'm going to give a card body and within that card body i'm going to give a card title so h2 with a card title and the text primary and my post will be the heading my post oops Sorry, this keyboard uh, is new, so that's why I'm quite figuring out hard to. And now if I see, we have this by postcard over there. So inside this card body, just below this title, I'm going to create this template called tables. And I will grab this table, so let me quickly copy that. And here inside my post component post folder inside the components directory, I'm going to create a new file called post list dot js uh, actually dot view. And let me give a basic scaffolding of view application and I'll, let me paste that. So in my users post component that we just renamed, I'm going to import that component. And that component will be post list from source components directory post directory will get our this post list and then we'll register that inside this default component in order to use it post list and then we'll render that out over here post list post list post list post list okay so this will you, you want to put s that you can do that but it will also work because only this name matters so now if I save it, we'll find that card is there. And let me get rid of these two other remaining that we have. We don't need that. Let me get rid of this styling inside my post list. And also I'm going to create a new file called post item.view component. So inside let me give a basic view scaffolding that we have. Let me get rid of this style tag. And from my post list, I'm going to get, I'm just cop cutting out this TR tag that we have. And I'm going to paste it over there. And inside my post list, I'm going to bring in that post item from post item. Then we have a components. And we'll pass that post item here. And here I'm going to render that post item. So if I save it, nothing should change. It should work just fine. And also let me give a top of margin, let's say four picks, four points. So this looks quite fancy and nice. And this will be SNO featured image of the post. Last name will be title, will become title of the post. And this will become created at and again, I'm going to give add one more column to that. 
table and this will be action so let me save it and you can find this table is created now so now what I'm gonna do inside my users post component I'm gonna define a data tag and we'll bring in our query in order to get a get authenticated users post that you can see from the doc clearly get authenticated users post and you can also say that it is taking page as well as the limit as the variables to that so let me quickly copy this whole thing and I will define a variable called query and inside that query I'm gonna write everything and let me format it just to make it look nice so this is a query variable and just below this tag h2 tag I'm gonna make use of Apollo query tag this will take query prop this will give you a GQL function callback and in that GQL we will pass our template string so we'll pass our directly query inside that and now within this Apollo query we have access to template that we saw in the previous video and this will give the slot and within that slot we have access to the result so this result will be coming from the Apollo query whatever the query has been executed so this will be result will be having three things data error and loading so we are basically destructuring that whatever we will get from the result and also this Apollo query tag since we are passing our page as well as limit as a variables so inside our Apollo query tag we will call it a variables and we'll bind that variable so we'll say page and that will be current page and then we have the limit so that limit by default will be six for now and this current page by the creation of the component will be one so I'm gonna register that inside the data of the component data prop of the component so now here we have access to this three things so we'll give a div we if if it is in a loading state call loading dot 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 oops saying I think yeah so that's fine we div and we else if data then we'll render that data in a pre tag for now later we'll bind it with our template so we have data and then we have div we else if we have error and sort of error something went wrong and in case of nothing happened so we have a v else and we in that v else we will simply write this line that we have no result actually so that's how it is and now you will find that you are getting that whole authenticated users post over here inside the data so instead of this post list writing just outside this Apollo query I'm gonna copy that from there and paste it inside my data where we have this v else if data div inside that and now we'll pass as the posts and we'll bind that post with the data dot get authenticated users post object and inside that we have that post so we are passing that post and now we no longer need that pre tag so now you can see nothing is there and now we'll receive this post inside here so firstly we have to mention that inside the props object we'll call it post then we have a type 
of array required will be true so we are receiving that post over here posts over here then we loop through that post inside this thing so we'll simply say v for post in post comma i so this will be our looping variable and then we'll have a unique identifier key so that will be coming from the post.id and also the id field will be there or let me name it s n o this will be i so this how this uh, this is the pass there and now we have to pass also the post so this post will be bound to this post that we are looping through currently so this is how our post item will look and now inside a post item we will again receive these props so we'll register them inside this props object so we'll call them here one by one so first of all one was sno and this will be of type number required set to true the other one was post that particular post that we are fetching pulling out from our parent component that is post list component and that will be of type object because each post will be an object and required will be set to true let's save it so here we will simply render that sno and by default looping variables start from zero we have to add one to that then we have a title so we'll simply say post dot title then we have featured image actually first it was featured image right so inside this thing we have this featured image so this inside this tab t tab actually this will become img tag and we'll bind that post dot featured image and also we'll give a style tag I like to use in this format in react as well as view so I'm writing that way height will be like 80 pixels and then we'll also give it a class of img fluid which is for the responsive image and then img thumbnail so we are giving these props and now let's see how it looks so post is not defined let me check where the post is not defined props and we have that post over there we are, we are getting that post list so let's see again property or method is not defined but referred during the render instance in our Polo query post list okay if we have something inside the data then render this if we have in the loading state we have to render this part okay so we have the posts inside a post we are having this prop called posts this will be of type array okay let me reload I think there's something went wrong yeah now you can see everything is working fine and I think currently I haven't added title to the this query so let me add the title too but we don't need the content oops we don't need the content as well as not this author field because since it is on the dashboard so author knows that this post belongs to him and also we don't need the updated art field so half of the metadata is already gone and now you can see the title is also there now with the created art field if we see inside our post item that we have and also you can see that post inside our post component we have used this date time filter 
So if I just copy and write it inside this post item, it will be kind of code repetition and which we don't want to do. So to tackle this problem, inside my source directory, I'm gonna create a new file, actually a new folder called mixins and view has provided this way of calling mixins in order to remove this code repetition. So I'm gonna say date filter, uh, date filters.js and this will export default and object from here. And from our post component, I'm gonna quickly cut this thing, paste it to here. Okay, and since it is using mixing, so we need to bring in that mixing also uh, moment. So we have to bring in that moment package also, and we no longer need that moment package inside our post component. And now in order to use this function, let me save that. So everything formats well. And now in order to use this inside this component, we have to import that. So we'll simply say date time mix in from source mixins slash date time. Okay. And then in order to use that mixins, we have to pass that inside a mixin mix mix property of this component. And we just have to register date time mixin. And now if I save it, our course shouldn't break and on our home page. Let me reload that. And you can see we are getting. So makes sense. Okay, date time. Actually, this name is date filters. So we are getting that error just because of that reason. So now application is reloading and now we shouldn't find any error. So if I go to the home page, our dates are rendered in a proper manner as it was rendering before. And in the same manner, we can use this mix in inside this our post item component also. So we need to bring in that. We need to register that inside the mix in component, uh, mix in of that component. And now inside this, I'm gonna just use that part. Actually, we can just copy that thing from here. So let me copy that and paste it in here. And now if I go to my post item, so we can see that created at field is also there. Now for the action, I'm also gonna add another TD. And within that TD, I'm gonna get three buttons. So btn.btn .btn with a class, the btn primary, and that will be btn sm, so a smaller size button, and we'll name it view. So this looks like this, quite nice. Then I'm gonna quickly copy this twice, and this will become edit, that will do add this functionality in the next video delete and this become this will become info and this will become danger let's save it and see how it looks but now these these are squished a little bit so let me get the margin to the first buttons m r2 let's save it and now this looks quite nice right and also in the home page component even in the post item component i'm also gonna give that button which will be like saying read more so let me copy that paste it over here and we'll call it read more and this won't be this will be a medium size button so let me save that and now you can see that read more button is there on every component so that's how that's these are the basics like what i will say these are the features that these kind of frameworks offer so let's go writing to or doing lot. So now it's time to go ahead and create this read more button, uh, create a new page, and then add uh, this read more functionality to our each and every post. So inside my this public JS, public router, where we have registered our public routes, I'm gonna create a path and that will be post. And this will take a parameter so on the basis of that parameter, it will fetch that post from the backend and then it will render 
uh, everything on the page then we have a name so we'll name it post component and it will lazy load that component with the help of function so we'll import that and yet not we yet not we haven't created that so views and we'll call post dot view file and inside my views I'm gonna create a new file called post dot view so this is our main view component and in this I'm gonna create a basic view scaffolding post page so this is our post page and now in order to access them let me quickly show how what we can do h2 with a text primary and let me name it post page for now let's save it so currently we have access to only through the URL but if you want to access through these buttons let me save it let me close that we don't need that anymore and from the post item and from the post inside the post component that we have created so on the click of this event we wanna navigate to that page so we'll simply say you make the use of router dot push and inside that back text we'll go to the post actually post and then we'll pass the post dot id so let me save that go to the home page and if I click on this now we are pushed to the post page so that was the post page and again I'm gonna use that same functionality inside the post item component that we just created post save it so now if I go to my post list if I click on the view we are going to the post page again so both the pages are now connected so now on the post component that we just created that post page we need to fetch our post from the back end using Apollo query so that we are just gonna do now but before that let me create a row and inside that row dot row and within that row we are gonna give a call of 12 then within that call I'm gonna give a card Div with a card let's press tab and oops so that is and this card will be not a normal card or before let's make it Apollo query tag first or what I can do okay let's give a card first then inside that card we we'll make use of our Apollo query and this will take query prop again this will give you GQL function then inside that GQL function we are gonna pass that thing and we'll get that firstly we'll register that that query inside the data property okay so we'll call it this query again and you can name any variable you want and now this was the query that we are using in order to get the user uh, that post so let me copy that and paste it inside the st string And let me format that a bit so this looks fine right and inside this GQL I'm gonna pass that query variable that we just created at the bottom and also we need to pass the variable so variables if you have one and Oops. 
and here we are taking id as the variable so we have to pass that id and for now i'm gonna quickly get one id static id that we have so let me reload that application and go to the post component view one post and currently you can see this dot the scope slot is not a function and that's because in here we need to render that out so we have a template And within that template, we have again access to this v slot. This will get fetch the result, and from that result, we have access to data as well as error as well as loading state. And now we can use that inside our template. So let me save it. Then again from our, let me close this file, from our home page, I'm gonna copy this whole data and dev and this dev, paste it. Copy this again, paste that at the bottom, let me save it. And I think why it's showing some error, I'm pretty much confused. This is our GQL and let's see, we have a template. Okay, we had we don't have that closing template, right? So that's fine for us now. So let me reload this whole application again. So to just to see it in the action, inside our post page, we go to this and we find that thing there. And if I go to my networks tab, you can find that, that it has sent that post. So now in here, I'm gonna render that thing inside the pre-tag, that data, whatever we are getting back for now. So this is everything inside. And in here, let me cut everything out from there. Okay, let's paste it just like that. Or I guess, let me cut this card dev from there. Paste it. So this is the data what we are getting. And from the bootstrap documentation, I'm gonna get one image card with the top image. So let me get one real quick. So this is the layout which I want for my post. So this was the layout, let me copy this. Paste it. And since inside the data, if we go to our this part, we are getting that data inside that post. So for image SRC, we'll go to this part, data.getPostById.featured image. Let's save it for now. So we are getting that image over there. And now this title will go here. So this is H5, I'm gonna make H2. And also give it a class of text primary so that it matches with our theme that we created in the first video and also this alt also I'm gonna bind it with that title for now you can do you can use you can do it according to your application needs so and here inside our we are gonna render out content Let's save it for now. So this is our post 12 and here we have the featured image. Then for the for this part, for this image, last updated on, we can again make the use of our date filters. So firstly we need to bring in our mixins. So import date filter 
from source makes sense slash date filters and inside makes sense we have to register that makes sense array and here we can make use of that so we'll paste that created uh, updated at and with the date time filter it will work just fine so you can see that we're getting last updated on october 23rd 2020 so let me go to the console let's check if we are not getting any error these are my dev tools so don't you don't have to worry about that and also we need to i want to copy it again paste it at the bottom for the created at field created on and we are passing this created at field so now you can see here pass one let's save it let me format a bit so that everything looks nice and clean okay so this will become like this okay okay so this looks like this so we have these and now I want to put my author name at the bottom so we can do that too let me copy that and we'll put that by author dot username and we don't need date time filter because it's a plain string and now by Nandy Mandy one is there later we'll add some link on that but for now this is just working fine so we can get rid of this pre tag for now that data pre tag that we were putting out at the bottom right so we can get rid of that too so we are getting that by Nandy Mandy one and let me modify because we are just using username so we don't have to Add those things again I think user ID is required so that's how we are doing later we may add some profile page but that's it this application might not look so classy but core concepts of the application are just being done over here so if you want to just follow along you can go ahead and if you want to try something new you can do that too according to your application needs and how you want to work with that but that's fine for me right now we need one more back button so we can do that too on the top I'm gonna give a button actually btn dot btn dot btn primary and we will call it go back and on click of that we'll use the router dot go and we'll pass minus one so this will take you the previous layout and now this is a back button let me give it a margin bottom of three units so this is a back button so if I click that we go to the back we still not done with the pagination we'll do in a while so but now if you see that if I click on post 11 we are still getting post 12 because this id whatever we are passing this is a statically typed id so let's see how we can see we can see whatever the id we want so if i write a pre tag and inside that if i write this route dot params not router it's route and you can if i go to this page now you can see that it's in that we have access to this id property as inside our public JS, we created this route initially in this video and we are accepting this ID as a parameter so we can make the use of this so let me copy this part actually cut this part and remove this pre tag and instead of this ID I'm gonna pass that params.id so let's save it 
So now currently it's on post 12. Let me go back, click on that. Currently it's fetching and now it's post 11. Go back, if I view this thing, now it's fetching post 7. So that's how it is working. And now pagination, it's very easy, we have already done a lot of things inside the pagination. So let me quickly close this and go to the dashboard, use this post. And just below this post list component, we'll just make use of other that pagination that we use inside our home page. So let me copy that, go to this page and paste it over here. We only need to change this thing because inside our data we need, we are now pulling out this get authenticated users post. So let's save it and it should work fine just like that. So if I reload this application, so no errors are there. Let me check in the console, no errors are there. If I click that, now you can see paginations are also working now. Only one last thing is left. That's scroll to top functionality. And that also we added in our home page, but we still don't want to repeat that thing, right? So let's see how we can do that. So one way is to just copy this whole watcher thing and paste it over inside this component. But we don't want to repeat this code since we are good programmers, right? So inside a mixin, I'm gonna create a new file called scrawler. JS. This is again I'm gonna export default and object from here. And this whole watcher part, I'm gonna cut that from here. Let me save that, paste it here. Then again we'll import it as a mixin inside both the components. So let's do that. Import scrawler from source mixins scrawler and then register inside a mixins paste it copy this part paste it save this so as far as our we are having this current page common in both the both the components so here we also we have the current page here also we have the current page and in a scroller we are watching through this current page so the whole functionality will be replicated inside both the components so now if i click on this we could we are scroll to the top now if i click that we are getting post 12 and 11 but if i go to the post page uh, i scroll to the bottom now again it is working and from the 6 to 1 the post have been fetched. Then we have post 11 and 12. We view it, we can see that post. We go back and everything is working. So I think this is a kind of longer video and in the next video we'll start seeing how we can deal with the Apollo caching and what are the problems currently we are facing with our application that we are not, we haven't seen yet, yet but I'll show those in the next video. And also we may touch across this delete functionality. So that's it for this video and hope you are guys enjoying your love and support as making me pushing me a lot to create this series again and again though I am facing a lot of troubles these days due to my travel plans and a lot of things but I'm making out some time just to finish it off the finish off these tutorials. So I love you guys for your awesome you are tolerating me a lot and I am also you are commenting on my videos that makes me really feel special. Thank you guys for your support and love. Keep spreading our content, hit like and subscribe to our channel, comment on our videos. Thank you guys.